My name is Ali Husseini. I grew up in Southern California and now operate one of the largest sport fishing websites in the world. Just another day at the office. My office, not yours. <laughs> I'm Rush Moss. Gotcha, what you seeing? Florida Keys native and career fishing guide for the past 20 years. Fish, when I come out to California, you can let me catch all the 300 pound tuna. Our passion is our profession, and we know there's more to fishing than just a catch. There's a good mark right there. That's what I like to see. He's not superstitious because that's bad luck. That's the one. We explore the people, places, and species that make up the culture of fishing. Fortunately for me, I've had a lot of opportunities to work with a lot of these great companies in the fishing industry. Just like all companies, everybody's on the forefront to try and come out with the newest thing, the latest thing, the greatest thing. Where is it, Dan? Going to the stern. I've been fortunate enough to get a lot of this stuff before it hits the market and have an opportunity to test it. Hi, right, Dane. So we're going to take some of these. These are your traditional iron jigs. Uh, some people call them flat falls, knife jigs, a lot of different names for them. Um, but what we're going to do today is take these hooks, like you can see this one, the hook's already moved to the top. But this one, the hook's on the bottom. So if you grab one where the hook's on the bottom, we have to move it to the top. We're going to do what they call slow pitch jigging. Vertical jigging now has been around for a long time. And basically, you know, it's taking a piece of metal with different cuts and, and shapes on it and dropping it down and moving it through the water column. Uh, traditionally, you're used to pretty quick jigging, you know, like you're jigging for kingfish or you're jigging something off the bottom pretty quick. With this, it's gonna be more of a sweeping action, okay? Well, since that, these different companies have started changing things around and changing the different cuts on these vertical jigs to make them flutter a bit more. Uh, so now it's not so much of a jigging motion with some of them, but more of a fluttering motion. So I want you to just really try and stay close to the bottom. Big lift, little jerk. A lot of times you're gonna hit it on the fall. They're not hitting it on the way up, they're hitting it on the fall. Now you're kind of trying to entice the bite more on the drop, more on the fall rather than the upstroke. So hit, hit the bottom and then sweep it up. Look, see what I'm doing? Up, let it fall. Up, Damn, there that you go. Dog. <laughs> oh. Yeah, boy. Let it fall. You got a fighter. It's getting heavier. Little grouper. Oh, I must have a trap rope. You do have a trap rope and a little uh, mutton mutt snapper. Going out, testing stuff. You know, I always have buddies who are ready to go, you know. Woo! <laughs> got out of my hand there. My buddy Dane, he, he works out of the marina with me. He's kind of a jack of all trades. He's always ready for an adventure. He's always ready to go try something. He's written them? I'm, I'm marking a few fish. I just wonder if I don't have the anchor and kind of chum them up, you know? Yeah. Get them behind the boat. On this particular day, you know, we had a good weather window. The jigs came in the mail. I grabbed Dane and asked him if he wanted to, you know, go, go try these jigs out, go check them out. Oh, yeah. There he is. It works. <laughs> Little guys, huh? They like that chartreuse, don't they? Yep. The day I went out with Dane was really the first time I had dabbled in this slow pitch fishery, this latest fad, if you want to call it. I really didn't know what to make of it. The first thing I noticed is, wow, these rods are super light. Go get them, dynamite. Something hit it. Something chasing mine on the way down already. Try a shark. You have to have a light rod like that to get the action on the jig, almost like loading a fly rod up. You know, you're, you're trying to get that load on the jig to make it come up and then flutter back down. Come to Papa. What you got there, buddy? Buddy, here he comes. He's coming up. Mutton snapper. Little guy. They like that chartreuse. Yes, they do. Well, at least we know they're here. We're just looking for a little bigger one. Three for Dino, zero for Rush. Like anything else, it takes a little bit of time to get used to. You know, I looked at a few things on the internet. Some people have different techniques as far as how they like to do it. 
And I think it comes down to the weight of the jig, uh, what feels best to you. Does that, does that jig really feel like it's loading up and doing what it's supposed to? Oh, <laughs> what? Oh, he got a Bonita. Bonita. Coming in hot. Bonita. That's, like, that's what we were looking for though. We needed that, right? Can we, we grab him? Not yet. He's not done yet. Oh, he just spit. My one fish is bigger than all three of yours put together. I knew that, I knew that was going to happen. <laughs> Don't let those trebles get you, all right? I know. Whatever. Yeah, buddy, right by the tail. There you go. There you go. He inhaled it right there next to the boat. Uh, one, one hook in the back and the head. Very so we fire. might chunk with him a little bit, get the bottom fired up, just to fire things up. The water's so clear today. Just so we can get some action on those jigs. Once the fish come up and start eating, it don't matter what's gonna go back down there, you know what I mean? They'll be fired up, they'll be eating, they'll be looking for anything falling like that, okay? Local knowledge is brought to you by Mercury, go boldly. Penn, let the battle begin. Yeti, built for the wild. Sea Keeper, once you feel it, you'll never boat without it. Bubba, the ultimate lifestyle. Seagar, the inventor and perfecter of fluorocarbon fishing lines. Nomad Design, crafted by experience. And by BDOutdoors.com. Feel a little better? I think something just ate them. Might be a good mutton there, dynamite. Oh, I think something ate the fish I had on. Something ate, oh yeah, a little guy and something ate it. Yeah. Oh, you sure? Cobia. Those are light rods, bro. It could be a good mutton. What you got there, buddy? Mutton. Yeah, there we go. That's the right guy. Not on the jig yet, but it really hasn't fired up. For me, the first species that comes to mind, if I'm gonna test a jig, especially one that you know you could work the bottom with, I wanna go target some mutton snappers, some grouper, or something like that. I wanna see how these jigs are gonna work on the species that I catch uh, predominantly around here. The fish are getting bigger. There's a good mutton, atta boy. There you go. That drag super loose. That's gonna be a good one there, Dane. That's gonna be a good one. I say 14 pounds. What do you say? Well, I hope he's 14, 14 pounds. pounds. That's a big Dane. old fish. 14 pounds. I've been pounds Jones in the cut. I've been seeing you bring all these big muds back to the dock. I've been waiting. That's one of them. Get out here with you. Damn, that's a fish right there now, Rush. All right, let him sit right there, Dynamite. Out of boy. Look at you. Look at you. <laughs> Nice one. So pretty, man. It's beautiful. Look at that ride you caught him on, too. You know, sometimes you just gotta change gears a little bit. If they're not biting one thing, you know, we've tried with the jigs a little bit, get them fired up a little bit on the live bait and the cut bait, and then go back to the jigs, nice. you know? What I'm visualizing down there uh, as I'm doing the slow pitch, that, that jig coming off the bottom, fluttering down, hitting the bottom, you know, and a cloud of sand or of some kind of noise. If, if you've been on the bottom, if you've dove or you see what goes on down there, you know that fish are attracted to sand. You know that fish are attracted to noises on the bottom. There's a good one. There's a good one. Fish on. So doesn't always come easy, does it? The hardest fisherman I know, Captain Rush. Doesn't always come easy. Right. Fishing ain't easy. Everybody thinks fishing's God, easy. I love these rods. I can just rest it under your arm like this. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, there's what we're looking for, buddy. That is what we're looking for. Look at that jig right in his mouth. Damn. Nice. <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> Gotta work at it some days. Nice, Rush. 
But so yeah, we fired the area up a little bit. We had to fish a little bait. Sometimes you just gotta change things up. Right. One thing's not working, you could always go to something else, see what works for you. It's fun on those light rods too, man. Like it really is. When you do get the bite, it's so aggressive. What a pretty fish. Pulling these small rods ain't that heavy. No, they don't get all worn out. They're easy to handle all day. And you know what I mean? Something yeah. different. All right, boys, there's been a huge buzz lately around this whole slow pitch thing. Every few years there's something really new and revolutionary that comes to fishing. And, and you know, a lot of times that stuff is coming from Asia. They're very technical fishermen. They do things a lot different than we do. You know, whenever a new technique like that becomes popular, you'll see tackle companies jump on the bandwagon here in the U.S. and start making offerings. And I've been dabbling a little bit in it with my charters. Uh, I've gone out with Dane one day, just playing around with it. You know, if you watch the show, you know one of my favorite things to do when I'm in the Keys with Rush is to bottom fish. And fortunately, he loves to bottom fish too. So today's a good day just to go mess around, you know, go try and, and catch a few fish on these jigs and, and these new rods they came out with. The cool um, thing, you have to scale everything down, yes. right? So when we can, I always, I mean, look at how little this thing is. I had mentioned to the guys that I had taken Dane out for a day and we dabbled in it and played around with it. And it was cool. It was really a neat way to spend the day. You know, it was different. We got to find new ways to catch rockfish out by us so it doesn't get boring. And this right. has been the hot ticket this season. I'm all about it. You know, Rush did some homework on his end, kind of trying to figure out how this slow pitch thing works. And he had some success. And I've done some, you know, research on my end, which means watching YouTube videos and trying to figure it out on the internet. And I wanted to bring what I had, put it together with what Rush has, and then, you know, take it to this fishery here in the Keys and see what we could do. What are they bread. looking like, Tony? Jacks or snappers? Right now, there's some snappers on the bottom for sure. Right. We're just kind of in front of the, uh, the wreck. And, you know, up high is going to be the AJ. What's fun about having Ali and Tony on the boat, too, zero expectations, you know? They're, I don't need a backup plan, really. We went out to try these jigs. We didn't put one piece of bait on the boat. All we brought was the jig bag, and we were going to see what we could catch on them. Oh, we got a hook up on all one over here. What, what could it be? <sighs> one of us got to get the skunk out of the boat here. Wow. He haven't got it in the boat yet, champ. And stop picking on Tony. What you got there, Rush? Woo. Lighter rod. <laughs> oh, those meals. How's that bonita coming, buddy? I think it got eaten by an amberjack. <laughs> oh, it'll happen. Doing a great job there, Rush. Thanks, buddy. I appreciate it. You keep up the good work, buddy. All right. Who's going to gonna grab this bad boy for me? That's a healthy model right there, Let's buddy. Get the blood flowing, eh? Yes, sir. He's a beauty. I like to warm up with one of these, Tony, just yeah. to, just yeah, to get, get the, the arms going. You, you, know, you don't want to go into catching big groupers and snappers too early. No, 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 no. Let's not be silly. Strong. You guys don't know how good you have it with those things. It's just so funny. Having a fish that big on tap, 24-7, 365, like, that's incredible stuff. It makes, uh -oh. it, may, it makes charter fishing easy some days. Dude, like you said, I mean, I send my boys back here to fish with you. And they're like so fired up. You know what they call them in Spanish, right? Uh uh. Pez fuerte. What's that sample? Strong fish. Uh. Guess what they call Jack Raval? Toro. Really? Oh. Really? No joke. Toros and Pez fuertes. All right, you ready for release? Look at them. Well, thank you, Tony. That was fun. There you go. Get the day started. Yeah. A little blood flow. I'm ready for another one. <laughs> Local knowledge is brought to you by CV Boats. Lead the way. Costa Pro Series. See what's out there. Aftco. Any fish, any water. JL Audio. How we play. Casa Vieja Lodge. Experience five-star angling in tropical Guatemala. Taco Marine. Troll the Edge. Sat Fish. The science of being lucky. And by the Saltwater Angler Key West. Get him, brother. Get Is that on the bottom? Yeah, yeah, it was. Here comes that big black grouper. 
Mm, not a giant, but might be something with a little color though. Is that on the slow pitch? It's on a knife streaker. Cool. Nothing huge, but nonetheless. A little bit of variety now. Not an amberjack, I can tell you that. <laughs> you aren't sweating. A little grouper. A little rojo. Wow. Oh, okay. That is cute, bro. A little scamper. Jig's almost as big as he is. <laughs> That's a cute one, brother. One thing I like about these jigs is just because you might be targeting a, a species on the bottom, it doesn't mean other species aren't going to eat them. And it really, especially doesn't mean that they're not going to eat them on the way down. Tell me he didn't have high expectations. That jig's almost as big as he is. Yeah. Uh, remember, these jigs aren't just falling straight down like a knife. They're fluttering down. So as you're dropping, you're actually working. That jig is working. It's doing what it's supposed to do. Oh, there dang you go. It. Huh? Oh, are you reeling up? Yeah. Oh, it's not. It's not an AJ. I'm Might be a Bonita or a tuna. I caught yeah. a lot of tuna here. Bonita. I'm not walking AJs right now. These little reels don't take that lineup super fast. <laughs> no, they don't. I'm like, I've turned this I, handle ten thousand times. I'm thinking the same thing. I don't think it's six to one, is it? This one wreck I like to fish, and it's usually loaded up with amberjack, but. There's also other species that freak around this wreck. Tuna. Is it tuna? Blackfin tuna? Yeah. Get out of town. Get him, bro. Especially when you get the right conditions. When you get this cobalt blue water pushed over top of this wreck, a lot of times the tuna are going to move in with it. Oh my god, that is such a perfect bait. <laughs> that is blue marlin bait and big tuna bait all day. Guys, yeah, feisty still, huh? <laughs> don't want that jig to fall out. No, don't crack yourself with that thing. You know, we went out on this trip thinking jig or die, and we're gonna go catch some bottom fish. But as things, you know, always happen on the ocean, it doesn't really go to plan. That's a weird grab bag, huh? Yeah. On one spot. Only Key West. Oh, I didn't want them to kick blood everywhere either. We tried bottom fishing, we hit some of our spots that were close by, and we noticed some marks higher in the water column. You know, I haven't caught anything up off the bottom on a slow pitch jig. I don't think Rush had either, but we wanted to see if it was possible. All right, let's let this little guy go. <laughs> nice work, team. This was our first time really working these slow pitch jigs up off the bottom. And we weren't surprised, but it was really cool to learn that some of these bigger fish really like those jigs as well. There we go, now he knows he's hooked. God, when they decide to turn and run, they... Don't they dig. It, yeah. And I got to imagine, Ollie, this has got to be super close to your yellowtail. Just boogieing I, down, straight down. Yeah, we just get over them, drop the yo-yo iron on them. You know, now we're using a lot of the buffalo jigs and stuff and finding they work just as well. Oh, no. <laughs> Wait, no, this feels more like a tuna. Oh. Rochi, I'm kind of over you. Over the top there. Okay, you want me to come up this way? Well, let's just maybe you go midship. And sticking to that theme of jig or die, you know, we had three different guys fishing, three different styles, three different rods. Rush was using a longer streaker jig, which is more your traditional knife jig style, you know, and that obviously worked. Dude, on this gear, this thing's giving me all I want. Oh yeah, you definitely got a tuna or a bonita. Might be pulling too hard to be a tuna. Nah. Look at the head on that sea monster Rush caught. Oh, goodness gracious. God. Oh, goodness gracious. What a fish you got there, Rush. I know, dude. I saw him there. Oh, we need that damn bubba net. Beautiful. Oh, man. Man, that is Holy the biggest black fin I've ever moly. caught. That's a 25 pounder for real. That is a legit black For real. Fin. Look, at Look at him, dude. That looks like our, our go-to yellow fin tuna minus the fin color. I mean, that's I mean, all day heavy. long. That's what we catch. You know, one of the coolest things about fishing with Rush is, is getting to pull him out of his element. His business is usually, hey, good morning, Captain Rush. You know, he's got some tourists or an old client getting on the boat, and he's responsible for putting them on fish. And of course, he's gonna go with what he knows works. That is a stud blackfin right there. You know, unfortunately, that doesn't give him a lot of time to play around, which I got a lot of that at home. When we go fishing, we're always trying new gear, always trying new techniques. Let's go ahead and let All that right. guy go. Two, one, and beautiful. 
it was really cool in this case to get out with Rush and Tony, you know, kind of see how they do things, kind of show them what we've learned and sort of put our heads together and have some goof off time and see what we could do with this new technology. Here Rush, can I help you with that? Yes sir, if you could get that hook out, that'd be great. Dude, straight rubber band zone, huh? Corner of the, look at that. Wasn't losing that one. No, that one's not about. coming unbuttoned. We as fishermen constantly reinvent ourselves and constantly have to be looking for that next thing. I mean, it's not out there. Fishing is not an exact science. And until it is, you got to keep looking for that new technique. Let's send this guy back. I'm looking for a little, little smaller grade now. <laughs> looking for that snapper grouper species. Oh, they're so nice tough. Work, dude. Fun stuff. Thank Beautiful. you, Tony.